As the country surpasses 12 million coronavirus cases, protests against stay-at-home advisories and curfews are popping up. In Huntington Beach, California, a large crowd of pro-Trump protesters gathered in defiance of common sense, science, and health to defy the state's curfew that went into effect at 10 p.m. last night. But they're not the only ones ignoring the rules. More than one million people still pass through the country's airports on Friday in the second highest single travel rush since the start of the pandemic, despite the CDC advisory to not travel for the holidays. Joining me now to discuss Chip Rogers, president and CEO of the American Hotel and Lodging Association, Sarah Nelson, president of the Association of Flight Attendants, and Dr. Kavita Patel, MSNBC medical contributor. Thank you all so very much. Uh, Dr. Kavita Patel, I, I want to start with you. What kind of danger are we seeing just in airports of tons of people crowding in for hours and hours and hours in order to prepare for a flight? Ed, Jason, thank you for bringing that up, and good morning to everyone. The, the biggest danger, honestly, is the fact that the majority of cases that we're starting to see are people who are asymptomatic because of that exact phenomenon, Jason. They're in crowded spaces. They're indoors. And candidly, even the people wearing masks, Jason, are not actually wearing them properly. I've seen a lot of images just on the news today of people with their masks kind of hanging around their mouth. And so if you're not doing that and you're not staying six feet apart and candidly, you're, you know, people are shouting, so their voices are raised and we know that that can project particles in the air that stick around. That is literally a, the definition of a super spreader event. Yeah, it's interesting. I was just in the airport to come up here to New York, and I see people wearing masks that are pulled down, their noses are exposed. It's like wearing a, it's like wearing a safety helmet on your butt. It's not going to work, right? Uh, Sarah, I want to ask this question. Flight attendants have a particular risk, right? They've got to be on the plane for hours on end with people who may or may not be behaving responsibly, with people who may or may not have COVID. What kinds of things are flight attendants asking from the airlines to do to keep them protected during this heavy travel week where no one seems to want to pay attention to the rules? Well, look, we're in a really weird spot because we're essential workers and air travel is essential to attacking the virus. But it, we also don't have enough work. Air travel is down 50 percent. And businesses are not having people travel. So people who are in leadership roles are following CDC guidelines and saying we're not going to travel right now. So here we are on the front lines without any direction from the federal government. I do want to recognize that the airlines have actually worked very closely with us on putting in place layers of safety and security. But without that leadership coming from the federal government, what you have is not enough people to help people understand how to wear those masks and how to uh, stay safe. Because if everyone is wearing their masks and following those guidelines, it can actually be a controlled environment that cuts down on the spread through air travel. The problem is we have to attack the virus, and we have to do that both in terms of good public health policy and also financial support. We're right in the middle of this pandemic, and people have pandemic fatigue because we're not being honest with the American public about the problem. So the airlines can actually spread the, the vaccine but if we don't have that financial support to have the people, planes, and routes in place, we're not going to be able to get that vaccine to the American public so that we can open up again. Sarah, I'm curious. Have you found that all of the airlines are equally helpful? Do you find some airlines are, are more agreeable to, to what airline staff need than others? Or do you think they're pretty universally supportive? I think that the airline industry overall, the people on the front lines especially, have been incredible patriots during this time and the airlines have been pretty responsive. What I would tell you though, Jason, is that as this federal relief ended on September 30th, now we are having financial decisions collide with public health. And there's stresses and strains there, both on the individual employees who are thinking about, should I go to work with a little tickle in my throat or should I stay home because I really need that paycheck? And then all the people who are out on furlough themselves and the airlines trying to cut costs everywhere to get through this crisis. So with that financial strain comes the likelihood of bad public health decisions. And that's why Congress has got to get their act together and get something passed right now. It matters to all of us to be able to open up again and be safe. Chip, I, I want to bring this up. So I've had to travel for work recently, and I was going to a particular state where I remember asking uh, the concierge at the front desk, I was like, hey, can you make sure that nobody has been in my hotel room for 24 hours? And she literally said to me, well, why? I said, because of COVID. That's why I'm wearing the mask. 
you know, what is happening in the hotel industry? Are, are you finding that, that people are just sort of haphazard about what they're doing about COVID? Because this is a weekend where people are going to be going into hotels, and not only the workers there could be in danger, but the staff are if they're not following CDC regulations. Well, the good news is they are. In fact, we started a program way back when this first began called Safe Stay that was adopted by the entire industry, every major brand, every major ownership group, every major management group, thousands and thousands of individual hotels have gone even beyond that and endorsed the program. Uh, our guidelines were reviewed by the CDC and we continue to make changes. We were one of the first industries to talk about having uh, masks or face coverings in any public space while you're indoors. So. Hotels are safe. Uh, there was a group of doctors in Michigan a couple of months ago that ranked all the activities that you could do from worst, like being at an indoor concert, to least, like staying locked up in your home. Uh, and they put hotels right at the same level as playing golf outdoors, of course. And so hotels have been safe since the beginning. We don't know of any instances where COVID explosions are happening in hotels. Um, and we followed the rules all along. Okay, that's good. That's actually exceptionally helpful. Uh, Dr. Patel, so there is a list, just a huge list of universities that are going to be closing after the holidays or just going virtual. I'm, I'm faculty at Morgan State University. We've been virtual all year. Some schools have been virtual all year. Do you think that schools shutting down after Thanksgiving, is that going to put a dent in anything, especially if those schools open back up in January? Or is this sort of, you know, uh, putting a Band-Aid on the San Andreas Fault? Well, it's, it's definitely more of the latter, but I, at this point, Jason, because to Sarah's point of the lack of any national leadership and frankly, cognitive dissonance that this is going on, schools are being forced to do exactly what you described. I think what's happened now is that we've just got a terrible set of choices. So we're making the ones like closing schools down, not just universities, Jason, but the fact that pretty much all schools are probably going to be virtual after the Thanksgiving holiday until some point in time in January is an abject failure of our ability as a country to actually do anything in terms of testing or at least having even national policies to recommend shutting down certain indoor capacities and venues. I can't believe that there are still people who want to have indoor games and sports when we know that that's an incredible opportunity to spread the virus. So I think that universities, however, I just wanna make a point, Duke University, for example, in a recent um, CDC report, uh, after having done serial testing and having a real strict adherence policy for events on campus, they were able to have a less than 0.05% positivity rate by doing all these measures. If you think about that, Jason, that's exactly what the country could be doing so that businesses stay open, hotels and the airline industry could actually thrive. I mean, there was a way to avoid having to make the bargain that we're doing now where we're shutting down parts of our economy and denying our children and university students their education. And I want people to remember that. This was something we, we absolutely, because of the leadership we put into place, made a decision to do. And, and, and we can do something about it. We can do something about it. it. These things are in our control. Chip Rogers, Sarah Nelson, and Dr. Kavita Patel, thank you all so very much.